Hello and welcome and today's video I'm going to be showing you the top 10 best early arc teams so without further ado let's get straight into it. In at number 10 I've decided to put the Rex as I find this is generally a very admirable creature to have in any given scenario and it's been in the game for just such a long while it's been in the game since it's been released so it's almost been in the game for nine years now it's a lot of games in one sentence isn't it but either way this is the creature which would get you through all your bosses this is the creature that you would look up to because you're like come on we'd have to get yourself a, a rex because the rex is or at least one of the gold creatures that we you'd be going for in the early stages of arc and it really still does stand up to that to some regards today although it has lost a little bit of its popularity with ease of taming and other creatures coming out which you might just say are simply better but there were some other good options at the time obviously things like uts and all of that didn't exist at all back then and uh, you know that's a 2017 creature which is far far too late for this list i'm pretty sure all the creatures on this list are 2015 but there might be a few that maybe just peek into the 2016 era next up we have got the quets as i found when this dropped still in 2015 uh, at least when the, i checked the dates the last time it was still 2015 and it really does hold up as being a really great arc tame and it did kind of shake the scales a little bit when it released nothing really like it had been released before and that's why it really stands so well as a creature like look at this thing it is a flying animal in which that you can put a platform side on the back of it you could build your own base on the back of this thing that was just so so mind-blowing at the time and it really deserves a place on this list for that for me but due to it just being a little bit later on and then also a nerf quite uh, soon after I do have to demote it quite a lot and there are just some other creatures which I thought were a lot more exciting and this concept was definitely very exciting to me but it didn't really grip me the most but I still have to put it in here as it did make a lot of impact to a lot of art players but I rarely use this thing at the time and I rarely use this thing now and I rarely have. I'm sure we all know the Dimorphodon this actually made a massive impact on me when this was first released into the game I was like wait what this tiny thing and it can just do so much damage damage and attack creatures and I use this all the time I would have like a whole big massive pack of uh, Deinonychus behind me and then boom like that they would all go in on those creatures and yes I definitely lost a few in my time but I really did enjoy using these creatures a very nice neat addition and still a 2015 arc tame in at number seven we have got the Ichthyosaurus and this really did captivate me as someone who enjoyed the hog ocean at the time and I maybe know that's not the best thing especially for a beginner to look out to because you know the arc ocean is a very hostile place but back then there really wasn't all too much in it and to it and you didn't get obviously those birds I can't remember the name of them now that would steal all your stuff not sure when the jellyfish and electric eels were added but you did have like plesiosaurs mosasaurs megalodons and obviously the ichthyosaurus when it was added at least I'm pretty sure it wasn't around uh, once the game was released but still a 2015 creature nonetheless I'm sure of this was the first creature as long as I'm uh, right to include the passive tame and that added a lot to the sense of the game and it was a really really cool ability and I still remember it to this day the passive taming ability or not really ability but method was a nice thing to have and it really felt like the game was evolving pun intended because obviously the title has evolved in it and it was a nice step in the right direction for us and we really enjoyed this creature and I say we because everyone that I know when this came out was really excited about this creature it was a fast agile underwater mount that could be tamed really easily and it offered a lot of support with underwater exploration very good early tame speaking of the megalodon i've decided to put on this list as well as i really did love this creature this was the first underwater mount i ever tamed named it bruce obviously because you've got to name it bruce the shark in jaws was called bruce so you've got to name all your sharks bruce at least that's the way that i look at it what's your name for your megalodons actually because i want to know comment that down below in the description uh, or in the comments actually you can't comment in the description don't know why i said that but yeah comment that down below 
Would you name your Megalodons, or do you have any funny or interesting names for any of your creatures? As I have a couple, I've probably hinted a few of them in the videos, but I want to know what yours are, because I know there's people that have loads of weird names for creatures. I'll give you one right now. The Titanoboa. No Titanoboa. It's a danger noodle. Always, that was one of my favourites. The Megalodon has since seen a TLC though, since it's released and now it does the bleed ability, but I still really loved it back then. I didn't even know what a bleed ability was back in those days. As far as I'm concerned, that wasn't in the game at all, apart from maybe the Giga had it when it released something like that, but that might have been a later edition as well. The Giga was also later on the list, by the way, but let's continue. Now, I'm sure we all know what our first flight was, and in number five, I've decided to put the Tyranodon slap bang in the middle because I feel like it deserves this spot on the list. It will be your first flyer in arc. At least it was the first flyer in arc that you would be taming back in the day. As to be honest, pretty much everyone was playing on the official rates, really, unless you were playing single player. I think there was still that 2.5 extra multiplier since the game had been released. Either way, not too short. The grind was definitely on back in those days, though, and you'd have to grind a lot to even get yourself a Tyranodon, and let alone an RG, but we'll get onto that later in the list as well by the way and this was just pretty much your only first flyer that you'd be getting you would bowler it or trap it in some way and then after that you would knock it out and then boom you get that saddle and that kite and keratin was the hardest part of getting this thing probably at least in my opinion obviously getting to the level of the saddle was just a tremendous exercise to get to at the time as well as getting like 35 or 40 i think it was because they grouped levels and fives and tens really in those stages of uh, the game like you'd be you get loads of stuff at level 25 and then you get loads of stuff at level 30 kind of glad they changed it because you get stuff at all different levels and obviously it's a lot more organized now did you prefer the old system do you prefer the new system give give me your take on that because i'm definitely a very uh, new system for arc stuff but you know your preference might be the old stuff if that's your thing would you rather just get loads of stuff actually let me rephrase this would you rather get loads of stuff at level 25 or get stuff at level 21 22 23 24 and 25 just as a collective or would you rather just get everything at 20 and then 25 would that be better for you or would that not be better for you comment that down below because i'm inquisitive continuing on i have decided to put the spinosaurus as i really did look up to this creature in my early stages of arc you might think well the rex is that go-to all-time creature where it's like you know the rex is my goal tame that is the only creature i'm going to go for why possibly would i go for anything else well the spino was really one of my go-to's back in the day it just seemed bigger and scarier and able to do more damage and just a beefier creature it really just was one of those times where i was like i really do love it for all of its attributes and i did definitely enjoy it as an art creature to have this thing on your side was absolutely insane i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it and when i first tamed one i was on top of the world i couldn't care less about my rexes obviously i still kept care of them but the spino was the new business in town it could just do everything that i needed it to it was a really great underwater tame as well so i felt the ichthyosaurus and Megalodon were a little bit more obsolete although i still did use them quite a lot as you know you could get around still pretty easily with those and you know i had that kind of underwater base setup that squid had in his old arc videos from back in the day as well i did actually find that to be quite nice for me actually but the spino still did kind of replace a lot of creatures for me in a way or at least uh, take a lot of the attention away from them you could say and again this creature has had a lot of tlc uh, mainly just actually the form of one tlc since it's been released a model change as well on top of all of that and it really is for the better it is a much better creature now than it was back in 2015 but still i really did love it and it was a really great early addition to arc and i'm pretty sure it was definitely actually i'm like definitely confident that it released with the game in number three we've got the Kano, and i just love this creature to death back in the day i really did just sort of need one of these things i was basically just completely reliant on having a creature like the Kano for me it was a go-to of mine and it still is a go-to of mine it is held to the test of time and i really do love it 
as a creature that came out in the very early stages of Ark. Again, very confident that this was just released with the game. It has also had a lot of TLC too in the form of one TLC update where now it's got the bleed ability and it just generally is a bit more well rounded. I'm not sure if it's had a model update. It definitely had a texture update at some point midway through 2015 maybe going into 2016 at that point and that was actually quite exciting to see but the Kano really did just excite me as a creature because I had loads of raptors at the time but they kept getting killed and it really wasn't something which I wanted to keep taming and I saw the Kano and I was like right I'll get one of those looked at where the saddle level was and I was like maybe I shouldn't but I was like no I'll still get one and then it followed me around everywhere once I obtained one of course and I would take it on metal runs and all of that and just let it attack some things get its level up because that's kind of just what I did to level up creatures back then you know I just take them around with me and just tell it to kill things it really did also just make my life a whole lot easier as well which just added to the overall benefit of this creature and how much I loved it and then when I finally got that saddle it was just so nice to ride around on the, these creatures as well and then I could progress onto things like rexes and spiners because aloes weren't a thing at this time whatsoever I think they're a 2016 addition to Ark and the Kano really did roar the roost and I still think it's quite high up there for me and actually for me superior to the aloe. In number two we've got the Argentavis and this has again gone through TLC with a model update and a whole host of new features. Not sure if I actually did have the Smithy as a saddle when it first released. I think the Castoroides was the first one to gain that, but maybe it gained it at the same time or at a later date when the TLC stuff happened. And I'm not sure if it had all the, the weight reduction, but it definitely had a very high weight stat and it could pick up a huge amount of tames much more than something like a pteranodon and it really was just an upgraded pteranodon of Myers, more stamina more weight and because you could crank the speed on these things because movement speed on flies was still a thing really do wish that that was still a thing that you could do because i just loved it so much and i still obviously every time i'm playing single player or if i'm running a server or something i will always have fly speed leveling on and obviously player speed leveling now if I'm doing ASA, which actually I do little of. I mainly uh, stick to Survival Evolved because I'm just enjoying it a lot more right now. And I am playing through Gen 1 and you can't really do that on uh, Survival Ascended at the moment. I'm playing through it again, obviously I have done Gen 1 before. And the RG really just was the, the kind of gateway to the best fire on the map. And that's why the Quetzal really didn't land too much for me because I felt the RG did everything it needed to do for me and I didn't need something like the Quetzal. Yes, the sky base was very cool and inventive, but maybe not quite what I wanted. And in at number one, we've got the Giga because this is, in my opinion, really, really deserving of this spot. It is just a go-to art creature for me, or at least it was back in the day. Now I kind of tend to stick to the Carpet and Saurus. And come on, this thing's still released in 2015. Yes, later on in the year, and it was an absolute monster. It was just so, so fun to get. The Rex and the Spino sort of seemed a bit obsolete with a creature like this. It was so massive, and it might have done the bleed ability back then, but I'm not sure. Uh, the wild ones, obviously, because the tame ones had no bleed, bleed ability whatsoever. And obviously, the wild ones were a lot more powerful than once you got the tame ones. But you didn't really notice that at the time. You would just absolutely decimate all the creatures in the area. And that rage buff was actually a really cool, nice, neat ability. You'd be crediting a lot of the time. At least I was. I thought that was a very cool addition. And it really made the Giga more immersive as a creature. Where now, it just kind of seems to be an, an annoyance. And it really didn't feel like its stamina was too awful back in the day. I never really encountered that all too much. I'm not sure if it was reduced or something like that. Or just simply a placebo on my part. But I really do find that with stats like stamina and weights, they always felt higher back in the day. I'm not really sure why though. The top 10 at best arc resource gatherers. So in our 10, we have got the Achatina. If you didn't know, this is a really great passive way to get yourself cementing phase. Sort of like how the Basosaurus is a way of getting passive oil quite easily. And I do find, yes, you know, that could be an honorable mention for this list, although I have not got it included here. I just find this isn't the hardest thing to tame, just some sweet vegetable cake will get it done. And the fact that you can get loads of cement phase through this is really useful, especially if you're on a server, because I'll be running all the time you're offline 
really really amazing thing so is the dung beetles as well actually so the shadow moon is something uh, or just some creature that you may not consider to be a great resource gatherer but in my opinion it really can do quite a bit in terms of hide and meat gathering it is a very nice carnival to use extremely mobile you can get around with ease and it's actually quite a good creature for gathering some fish meat as well it can be very easily done as it is a tremendous swimmer and you do find that with a lot of carnival I was considering putting maybe like the Carcodonsaurus or the Rex on here or the Spino or creature like that But I find that these creatures do it better because they are more mobile I'm not sure if the meat gathering rate is different and actually a lot higher on those But I just find it's easier to get it done with those still really powerful small creatures as they can just get everything done more effectively and efficiently in my eyes it really does just work well for me and that is why i simply have to put these creatures on the list as i really do love them for all of the gathering which they do for me and i actually think they deserve a little bit more detention i mean attention in the resource gathering community because they definitely can do quite a bit which you might not expect them to do the castoroides is up next and also the megaloceros as the male megaloceros as a short honorable mention as it is a really great stats gatherer and i really do uh, commend it for that i just haven't put it on this list because i thought it would kind of go nicely with this creature which is the castoroides of course i've already said that and this is your go-to wood gatherer and obviously wood and wood and thatch go hand in hand one is a very useful resource for any kind of structure guns weaponry and one is just uh naked zombos absolute favorite resource and with the castoroides being so good at getting wood they really do deserve to be on the list yes obviously i think it's like the chainsaw i think it's called that at least in the game my mind is failing me at this time of day or night i should really say but yes that is a very good way of getting wood but the castoroides is also a splendid way too it is relatively quick and agile and get around too and actually in the early game it can be a reasonably good way to get silica poles as they're not the worst swimmers out there and they can get away for some dangers and on top of that actually they can pack some bite and punch as well definitely don't underestimate them in damage department although maybe you originally would in number seven we have got the stegosaurus and it's just one of those creatures where you do have to respect it for its berry gathering it is one of those creatures where it's like it is just it does its job effectively you can say the bronto is a very good suggestion as well but the stegosaurus the og the trike and the parasaur is also some uh, good suggestions on top of that as well but i find out of all of the uh, creatures on the list the stego kind of deserves the most credit as i find it can gather a lot of berries reasonably quickly especially considering its size yes maybe not quite to the volume of the bronto but it comes with a little bit more ease of use and also general versatility as well i know they're not aspects which are on the list today but still i thought i would factor that in as they are just generally just nicer creatures to use on the whole also they're a little bit more inconspicuous as well so if you don't have cryobods yet you can tuck them away more easily and that's more useful obviously for pvp servers but for pve as well you might just not have the space to facilitate something like a bronto at least not easily yes you could leave them outside but you risk them getting killed by some other dinos and obviously they're great tanks as well for given pvp scenarios and it is just actually pretty good at gathering wood as well. I think with the uh, heavy plate, something like that. Either the heavy plate or the hardened plate. It'll probably be the heavy plate because the hardened plate is uh, the one used for turret soaking. But yeah, that one's actually pretty good for gathering wood as well. The Dionicus, in my opinion, is sort of the upgrade to that meat and hide gathering thing and that is why i've decided to put it here uh, generally i do prefer them as creatures they have the bleed ability as well uh, the shadow main doesn't as far as i'm concerned yes they don't have dehydration buffs they're not going to be as good as gathering all kinds of fish but still they can kill big and large creatures really really quickly they can simply grapple onto them like that you can even just bring one out you don't really need more than that for all of your resource gathering needs quickly turn to shreds and get 
all of that meat and hide. You're going to have no issues whatsoever. Pretty great at gathering some chitin as well. Keratin is going to be easy to. And actually, that does remind me, if you're wondering about the uh, Megatherium, I'm going to give that a brief honorable mention, as that is a really great chitin gatherer for its insect uh, buff where essentially if it kills an insect it will rage and you can just get loads of damage out of it but generally go into a cave with pretty much any creature that is powerful enough to defeat everything with all of those bugs you're going to have a lot of chitin out of it anyway but the megatherium really is going to farm tons and tons and tons especially if you're in the insect cave and there's another creature which is actually further on the list which could be useful in that scenario as well but we'll get onto it slightly later on in the list but yeah the Deinonychus, a great meat and hide chitin keratin gatherer. It takes no fall damage, really is an extremely mobile creature and very much deserving of this spot on the list. In number five is the Theri, and I'll give the Moss Chopped a little bit of credit as well, although the Theri started was unlocked at level 69. Either way, this creature is, in my opinion, the best fiber gatherer out there. Whereas the Moss Chops is also a really great one and really great for organic polymer as well. And I do really attribute it for that. And it is a great gathering team. It's just, you know, there are so many creatures to really get through. And these are the ones that I've thought of first and uh, resonate most with me. But if you do feel as if I've missed any creatures, I probably have acknowledged them in some way or maybe at least tried to in this video and even if I've completely missed them blatantly I'm sure I still care and leave a comment down below with what your favourite gatherer is or gatherers which you think that I may have missed as I always do want to know what uh, maybe I can add to these videos into the future to maybe just make them better and in some ways more personalized to you as well while still keeping the opinions valid to me as well yes i know there's a lot of pvp players that watch my content but do just take into mind that i'm a very pve centered channel so most of your pvp stuff while interesting to me doesn't make a whole lot of sense overall i'm really like like not knowledgeable at all when it comes to any of that stuff and yes they're all very nice and useful tactics but i'm just surely uh surely i just i just don't really i don't really use them as much as maybe i should thinking of that creature that i was uh talking about before with that insane uh, gathering of not chitin but with caves and insects you're gonna get yourself a heck of a lot of cement space with this thing much faster and much quicker than the ashtina obviously and also, sorry about that part ramble on about the theory there when I talked about uh, other stuff. I went a bit off topic. I'll promise not to do that later on and also just throughout the rest of this video. But yes, this is the best cement space gatherer out there in my opinion. BB dams exist, but nothing does really compare to a creature like this. It is fast agile very mobile and if you get a good level it has enough health and damage to withstand some caves especially even the insect cave if you just take your time a little bit you can get yourself tons and tons tens of thousands of chitin in fact the real difficulty is just getting all of that chitin out of the inventory of this thing and out of the cave because you'll be slot capped and overweight and all of that stuff as well that's not the best situation to find yourself in but they can just gather so much chitin that's simply what they do and also they can gather some fish pretty effectively as well they are great swimmers and you can do a little bit of combat with them so some hide and meat wouldn't be the hardest thing out there to get but mainly these things are the best for chitin gathering which is useful in so many crafting recipes in number three i've decided to put the mantis as i find it is a really versatile creature yes maybe you don't think of it as a really great gatherer for all of uh, or just specific resources but the thing is this thing can gather just so many things anything that you can physically gather with a given melee weapon that being meat hide chitin keratin wood thatch stone flint metal obsidian crystal rare mushrooms rare flowers fiber uh, and all of that stuff you can gather with this creature with absolute ease you just simply need to equip that weapon and you can get quite a lot of it pretty quickly the only difficulty is sometimes the mantis can be a little bit of a pain to tame and 
uh, especially if you, you aggro it in some cases. It's not the easiest, almost friendliest thing to come to, but once you've got one, especially if you've got a high level one, you're really going to enjoy these things and their versatility in resource gathering, which is why I think they really do deserve this spot on the list. Again, I named just so many resources and there are even more as well that these creatures can gather. Pretty much, again, any feasible resource that you can gather with any given melee weapon out there on uh, a creature or just actually that you can equip tech weapons i'm pretty sure do not work on this thing and also just to bear in mind the durability of the weapons will drop a lot more on the mantis compared to any or compared to when it is on you so the, you know the weapons might break a little bit faster than you expect at number two we have got the desmodus and this is just for actually maybe two simple reasons they are really great at fun blood bags and one of my favorite art creatures out there is the blood stalker and also the desmodus as well and that is very useful for taming blood stalkers and the desmodus as well and they can give you a little bit of a nice healing boost as well although the medical brews will work a lot better and i'm pretty sure there is a timer on how fast you can consume blood bags as well so not the best but you still can use them in a pinch but the main thing about this is the fact that they have sang on elixir which is an absolute cheat for tames the fact that you can craft it with the resources that it gathers obviously being blood bags it's also great meat and hide gatherer kite and carrot and all the things that you can gather for animals it's going to do perfectly as well but that sang on elixir 30 percent of that tame is done with a click of a button no issues whatsoever it really is a golden star creature when it comes to its resource gathering i really feel as if it deserves to be in the number two spot it is just so so good and that resource is just so so useful to have especially for me as a pve player that does a heck of a lot of taming but anyway in at number one is the anki and also the dodig as well that's just a side thing they really both do fit into the number one spot for me they are just such good gatherers but the anki is the main one as without metal really what are you gonna do in art i know you can gather metal without the anki the mantis can gather metal really well but the anki gathers it a lot better you can get crystal and obsidian a lot better this essentially acts as the pick upgraded i hear some people going around just like oh why isn't there a better pick after the metal pick this is essentially that and then if you want a better hatchet then get the dodic and it will do all of that for you these two creatures are the best resource gatherers in the game it is going to do everything that you need it to do or everything that you need a pick or a hatchet to do but just on another level and if you pair them with an rg as well if you've got some cryopods too then you can carry them around very easily but then boom like that get loads of metal stone thatch not and woods and obsidian and crystal and all of those resources and then carry them all back in the rg and probably not even be encumbered whatsoever it is just such a great resource gathering strategy and i really do advise it no mining drill or whatever is going to compare to the sheer amount of gathering that you can get out of a creature like this but anyway that is in today's video i really hope that you've enjoyed also sorry that i forgot the text strider if that is something that you're going to mention I gave it a brief mention in the outro. Either way, comment down below what your favourite art resource gatherer is. And if you didn't agree with this, put your turn in the comments below. I'll see you later.